Welcome to ECTP Presence Tech View, another episode. Today I'll show you guys how to install um, new vCenter, which is the latest version uh, 8.0. So I'll show you guys step by step. But before I install, I want to show you one thing, what we, you need to be considered before you install any new version. So which is called compatibility, right? Your, your environment compatibility. So uh, there is a compatibility matrix. So you can go via more or portability matrix side, then you can check actually. And so whenever you go uh, to upgrade or install new base center to manage your existing environment, you should consider those things. Um, so which is called prerequisite. Actually, prerequisite is actually what kind of hardware you need to install base center and uh, it's compatibility, all those things together, right? Uh, so basically when we install new um, or latest software, we should consider our existing environment. It's gonna be support our existing environment. It's gonna be compatible with our existing environment. So that's what we're gonna ch check right now. So I'm going to share my screen and quickly, I'm going to check, which is BMR interoperability, ma interoperability matrix. And if you search this, you can get, get the link, you just directly go there and then you're gonna get it. Then you're gonna get it. So from there, you're gonna get it. Click here. Oh, okay, actually I got all the here. So if you click here, so now we're trying to um, specifically, which version is supported, right? So if you think, okay, I'm going to install vCenter, say for example, seven, vCenter, and just go down, vCenter server, and what kind of version? You can say, you are trying to have like vCenter 7.0.0 update three. U3 means update three, or maybe zero, whatever, right? So which version is supported? If you say, okay, update three, just, just for an example, update three. We are checking with update three, right? And in here, we're gonna, we're gonna start with the ESXA, right? Which ESXA version you're gonna support. So what does it mean? Say so for example, your environment has ESXA 6.5, 6.0, and 6.7. And you have a vCenter, you have a vCenter 6.7 running, right? And six, you're managing all the ESXA server from your vCenter 6.7. Now you are planning to upgrade the center from 6.7 to 7, but before you upgrade all you or new implementation, you have to make sure you 6.0 or 6.5 is compatible, is manageable by 7 or not. So that's what you're gonna check. The ESX side, hypervisor, and then version. So think about uh, say for example, you have 6.0 update three, right? 6.5 update uh, one, 6.5 update three. Uh, you don't need update two and 6.7, okay. I selected multiple versions, 6.0 update three, 6.5 update three, or update two, whatever. I'll just remove it, 6.7 update three, okay? So check the portal matrix. It's not showing any data because I have one here. So six, look like 6.0 not supported. Now I'm checking with this. It should show in the class. Or if you say 7.0. I'm not sure it's not, why it's not coming up. Um, Okay, so past and general support. Okay, the reason it's not showing previously because it's in past and of general support because the general support is already end of life for 6.7. That's why it's not showing. So when I uncheck it, make sure the hide legacy release 
than this one, unchecked it, okay? Unchecked it. Because if you have a check mark, that means BMR already declared 6.7 is end of life for general support. So it's not gonna show up. So it look like what it shows, 6.7 update three. If you have a ESX 6.3, and we are December is seven, so it's compatible, but for December sequence, it, it has some, um, for December server uh, 7.0 onward applies to the December server as well as to update manager. That's fine, that's work. And, and if you look at for 6.53, now check it, okay? And then check, 5.2, okay, and check 6.5 directly, okay, check, say 6.0 of the two, it's not. So that means any SXA version is 6. Something 6.0 or 6.0 update 2. We will check. Let's check with update uh, 6.0 update 3. Check. So it's not, also, it's not showing here. That means what? B Center 7 not going to support 6.0 or 6.0 update 3. Any SX, it's not going to support. So in that case, what do you have to do? You have to upgrade. 6.6 ESXi, 6.0 ESXi to at least 6.5. If you want to manage the ESXi from through your uh, ESXi Bcenter 7. So that's what you need to check. That's what you need to check. So now our target is to check with 8. If we deploy Bcenter 8, it's going to be compatible with all those versions or not. Let's check. So it shows only, what it shows? It shows only 6.7 update three is supported. But it's gonna have a little bit issue, but it's gonna support. So, and also now I'm, I'm gonna check other version of the 6.7. So we are pretty sure with Bcenter 8, you cannot manage Yes, XI 6.0, any version of zero or update one or update two or update three. And also we, we already we already sure that um through B Center 8, we cannot manage 6.50, 6.51, 6.52, 6.5, sorry, 6, 6. 5, update one, update two, update three. None of them supported. So only only one version of one version 6.7 support. Now we are going to check actually 6.7 which version is supported. So we're going to check all the 6.7 version. So 6.7 we have um, say 6.0 okay and then one two and I will three right. Just for your understanding, the so 7.0, 7. Uh, 7. Oh, sorry, 6.7, update 1, 6.7, update 2, 6.7, update 3, okay, update 3, right? So check. All right. So that means all kind of, all kind of 6.7 supported on 8. And let's start it to deploy or install. Center it. So we are done here. We check all of the interference metrics which is compatibility. So if we have any six six point seven ESX in our environment, we can we will be managed through the center rate. That's where sure now we need to implement, start implementing. So before implement any decenter, the first thing is you have to install. Uh, sorry, you have to create a DNS entry for that. So I'm going to create a DNS entry. So we just host Aracle, right click. This is my yeah, DNS server, uh, right click here and provide the name because ahead of time, or because it's all of about your planning. So based on your plan, you should be selected name based on your company naming convention standard. So 
I'm going to put it the center, the center of H dot, the center of H is fine. Or I can say L is the center. L is the center. Or just the center. Whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. You know, see here, the center of H dot L is dot com because my domain name is L is dot com. And what's the IP address I'm looking for? So my uh, my 6.7 the center is 40. So that's what I can say 42 because the 41 I'm, I'm reserving for uh, the uh, center 7. So 40, right? So what should be the IP address? 192.168.1.42. It doesn't matter, whatever the IP you have available, you can put it. No, no issues. So that means what? Uh, we are successfully able to create. We're successfully able to create this one. Okay. So also it's created. Eh? Let's 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 refresh it. Forty one. We're supposed to have a forty one here. Forty one is not here, right? If it is not here. Go back again and oh, sorry, we did a mistake. So 42, right? 42, so 42. Okay. Okay. 42, okay. Yeah. We should see here for the two. Yes, for it is here now. Okay, so for the two, and we know what's the fully qualified domain, which is this one. So we're going to use it. When you're going to install it, you can, show, you can ask us what kind of. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm going for direct installation. I'm going for direct installation. So for installing, um, B Center, I'll highly recommend you. So, B Center installation is a little bit different than um, the VM installation because VM ISO file is going to be stored on your storage as an ISO. But for ESX installation and B Center installation, ESX you have to put somewhere and you have to install to the IDO or IDREC or maybe on the CD or maybe on the flash drive. And B Center, B Center also you have to download the ISO file from VMware what's from VMware portal, whenever you have access, you can download it. And whatever the version you want, you can download. And we are going to implement today is app files. We spare so we have the center eight app files. Okay. And I have already downloaded the copy. And this is my high recommendation. Don't copy or download the ISO file on your local laptop. You can you can download on your local laptop, but Move it to the jump machine. Why jump machine? Because the jump machine is going to be run from your virtual environment. If for any reason on the implementation time, for example, the implementation will take, um, say, about one hour. But whenever you start your installation process, after 20 minutes, it's, it's only 20% or done, or maybe 30% done. In the meantime, you have an emergency. You need to shut down your laptop or you have to go outside. So if you shut down your laptop, the installation process is going through your laptop, right? On your environment. And also, then it's going to be interrupted, right? That's one point. Another point is, say, for example, something happened. You are OK. You're installing yes, a, a December server from where? From your desk, uh, from your laptop. Say, from this is my laptop. This is mine. This is my laptop, right? From laptop. But so what's going to be happen? So from your laptop, you cannot, until it's finished, you cannot close, right? That's one point. Second point, uh, second point is, your laptop is running with Wi-Fi. And something happened to your home network, Wi-Fi network. It's interrupted, right? So your instruction will be interrupted, right? So there will be a lot of issues you can face if you install the center from your laptop. So that's why I highly recommend just move or download directly on the on the jump machine, or if you download it on your local laptop, just move the ISO file to the. I think I already did it here. This is my jump machine. So this is my jump machine. 
Let's see. So I have downloaded, I have downloaded the ISO file. Yeah, see, this is the ISO file for the center A. This is VCSA, VCSA, the center server appliance, all 8.0.0. This is the version of the release or doing it. So now I'm going to install it. So what's the installation process? So the way my file is right now, but my ISO file, this, this, is, this file size is 8.19 gigabyte. This is a big file, ISO file. And I I put it on my jam machine, right? It can be on, on any folder or any desktop, it doesn't matter. So right click on it, you can say mount it. So when you mount it, it's gonna mount, it's gonna mount as a C drum and immediately it's open a window. What kind of window? Is your file is your file explorer window? If you click on the file explorer, you're gonna get the same kind of window. And if you don't get it, for example, you didn't get it, so how are you gonna get it after you mount it? Then go to the file explorer and then go to the go to the you, you, this PC, you can see here, go to that. That's how you make it. Now, where you should go? VCSA, UI installer, CLI installer or UI installer. UI means graphical user interface. So VCSA UI installer, click here. Go to the in 32 and then in here you're gonna see installer here. See the installer is loaded. So right click on it and say run as administrator. And now you can minimize it or you can close it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to minimize it. So it's gonna be Okay, so it's loading now. And and actually it depends, look like it's slow, right? Actually it's not gonna be slow. If you work on your office environment, everything's gonna be fast. I'm using uh, my own server and I have a lot of machines running, this is a little bit slow. Anyway, so now what you should do, install, upgrade, migrate, and restore. So if you have something goes wrong, with your existing eight, then you can restore from here. You can use this option. If you want to migrate, like you have Windows, but Windows B Center, then you can move from, you can do these options for migration. Upgrade, so for example, you're using seven, now you're going to upgrade to eight. So you can use this option. But in our case, we are doing like fresh installation, brand new installation, right? So you can click install. When you click the install, click next. See here, this is stage one and stage two. So deploy this in the server, okay? So stage one, click next, and then accept, and then click next. And then VSXA host or the center server. So VSXA host, why are you gonna put now, what this, the first stage is gonna be create a virtual machine, which is which gonna be a decentralized appliance. Created by the machine, gonna be a decentralized appliance. So why are you gonna put that this this um, yeah, this virtual machine, this appliance? That's what like which is exciting. You have to mention either either the either FQDN or IP address. So I uh, can just turn uh, one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot uh one dot I think eleven. Or what you can do, you can use this name. See here, I have a name here. DNS host zero one dot either one same. So now I'm going, I'm showing you both options. Okay. And it's report this is fine, user and root and login. Will you Login credential and say yes and All right, so VM or this is the server, VM name, that is in your appliance virtual, this is the server appliance machine name. So by default, it should be VM or this center server, but change it. So how, how are you gonna change? Say, you 
Yeah, my name is uh, we select the center rate. That's it. The center rate. Uh, set so the root password. So you can use your maybe same password or remember. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's fine. All right. Click next. All right. So deployment size, tiny, small, medium, large, external. So with the tiny by default, and it's gonna, how much space CPU or memory consume based on the deployment size. So it depends on your environment. If you think with this vCenter, you are going to manage 10 hosts or maximum 100 hosts, 100 uh, virtual machine. In that case, tiny deployment is fine. But if you have a bigger environment, say you are going to manage uh, more than uh, close to 100 DSXA hosts. In that case, your deployment should be small. Either 100, 100 DSX hosts or 1,000 virtual machine. But if you are maybe managing more than 100, maximum is 400, and 4,000 is going to be maximum virtual machine. In that case, you deployment should be medium. So ma maximum case, I believe, if you have a big environment. But anyway, most of the case, people use small one because if they have more than 100, they use maybe other B center. Or it's not, it's not actually the actual case. Like if you have a big environment, you should go with medium. At least you can handle one, one B center, 400 uh, USXL machine. And if you have a more bigger than that, then you can go large or extra large. So in my case, this is my home lab. I'm selecting only tiny because I don't have that many physical hosts. And also I don't have, and I'm not expecting I will have more than 100. VMs. That's why I'm going for tiny deployment. Click next. And now, why are you going to install you? Why are you going to install you what? Why are you going to install you vCenter, right? So select the. So right now, I'm just selecting one of my, uh, one of my, NAS storage. Click next. And network. If you want to change the network, you can network all by default VM network. It's up to you. Assign the static IP address. Yes, that's fine. And now it's looking for, oh, it's not this one. Now it's looking for FQDN. So the one we created here. You guys remember we have created here. So this is this one. This looking for this one. So I'm going to copy this one and going back here. Or you can type it, it doesn't matter. An IP address. What the IP address? 192.168.1.42, right? And subject last 255.255.255.2. Now you can ask me who, how you get it, right? I know this is my subnet, it's 24 subnet, so that's why it's 255 But based on your IP, based on your subnet, your subnet must maybe, maybe change. And also your default directory can, can be changed based on the subnet. So in my case, is 192.168.1.1. And DNS server. So my DNS server, this is my DNS server. So what's my DNS server IP? This is my DNS server. Okay, one four. And I'm expecting I'm going to I'm, I'm going to plan another one will be different. Now you got four. Okay. So that's what I'm going to mention here. Okay. here. So what it, it up to you? What's what, what's your organization DNS server IPs? So mine is 192.168.1.4. And if you have multiple DNS, you can just use comma and then other IP address. So in my case, mine is 10.15.98.4. Oh. And all those are things, all these things are okay. Just click next. 
Now, ready to complete stage one. Now it's ready. That's it. Finish. And now it's, it's going to be. Now it's, go, it's going to be deployed a virtual machine, which is going to be our decentralized appliance. And that selected USX. I selected USX number one, right? So the deployment is running. It's going to take maybe, I'm not sure, 15 to 40 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video. And whenever it's done, I'll back and I'll, I'll come back and then I'm going to do the stage number two. All right, so it's done. It says uh, stage one that deployed this in the server. You have successfully deployed the this in the server. So it's done. It's complete now. You can you just need to click on continue. All right, now it's loading stage number two. Click next. And time synchronization mode, deactivated. Uh, okay, synchronous time with the SXA host, synchronous time with MTP server. So I'm going to do the synchronous time with the MTP server. You can do it with the USXI. So whatever the USXI time is going to be synchronized with USXI. That means what? USXI must have to have an MTP configuration. So I have both. I can choose synchronous time with my with the uh, MTP server. And what's MTP server at this? Just give me a second. Let me check on my MTP server. I have deployed this one is my MTP server. So my environment is pretty slow now. Anyways, um so summary, if you go to summary, you can see. So my MTP server IP actually. 192.168.1.3. So I can use the name at QDN or I can use the IP address. So let's let's use the IP address. You can have if you have multiple entity, you can use multiple entity server. So my case is 192.168.1.3. SSH, you can activate the SSH and click next. I want to sync to the entity server. Okay, uh, something goes wrong with this. Anyway, if it is not, in that case, I can go with host. This is the host. Click next. <laughs> so I showed this is the host. And this machine is, this VM is hosted on my user side, this one. Let's check actually these MTP settings of this host. I'm just checking, nothing else. Uh, we're checking the time configuration. It's running, it's running with the MTP. So that means your ESX is getting the time from this MTP server and your virtual machine, the one we are deploying right now, which will be center, is going to get from Okay, anyway. Single sign-on configuration. What does it mean, single sign-on? Single sign-on configuration means it's a small kind of domain, same as like as uh, Active Directory. Through the Active Directory, you will be able to manage your entire organization. All computers, all devices, everything you can manage through Active Directory, right? But what, so I said uh, single sign-on configuration, this configuration is going to be created domain, and that domain is similar to Active Directory domain. But the, the difference is this is going to be work only the 
PMO environment. Only the decentral environment, not outside. So only the decentral, that means what? It says provide a name, the way we created ELS.com or system.com, whatever the dot local, any domain, same kind of domain you can use, or you can say bspare.local, which is default, you can say. But I'm going to say primary, I will say primary H because this is the center A, right? So all maybe based on my location, this is in uh, Virginia location, I can say uh, BA, BA site BA.local. So that's what I can say. So BSPR, we know this is the BSPR, right? You can say. Local is fine. Virginia local. That's fine. Or if you have a like bigger name, it's fine. BS pair BA or even say BS pair BA. BS BH pair dot BS pair BA dot local. And BS pair BA dot local and single sign on password. Back to you. And here, join with customer experience, never check mark this one. My default is check mark, I'm checking. Click next. And now it shows all the configurations and just click finish and click okay. And now it's gonna take another maybe 15 to 30 minutes. It depends on the network speed, like your bandwidth or it's, and also your, the machine you're deploying, that machine speed. So a lot of things can be considered for like how, how quickly we can deploy. Anyway, we have to wait. So the waiting time, I'm not just waiting here. I'm just going to pause the video and I'll come back when it's done. All right, so this one is completed successfully. So stage number two is done. The business server setup has been completed successfully. Click on below this link. So this is the URL for Log into the B -Center, new B Center, which is B Center 8. So I'm going to close this window and I'm trying to access this one with the URL. So I can click here and say B Center. The center eight dot ELS dot com. That's a new machine, right? All right, so I believe I have to use HTTPS in the beginning. HTTPS don't so slash slash. So is not okay. Okay. The center, I made a mistake here. So the center, edtowerus.com. All right, now this is the right one. And now we're able to see the interface. The center, edtowerus.com, okay, click launch. And So based on my check, it look like 6.7, all version is compatible. So we're gonna check, we're gonna check 6.7. This version, this version, whatever the older version we have, we will try, also the older version to add, and also the latest 6.7. All right, so um, in here, ADMINISTRATURATUR, add BS 
square B averaging away, right? W over right? therefore you need single sign on, right? And therefore. Right, we are successfully logged in, and there are expired or expired, uh, expiring license in your inventory. Okay, that means it's talking about the recenter. I don't have license, but this recenter is good for 60 days. I can use it. All right, so uh, we logged in. We send a rate and I deployed two ESXi, ESXi 8 and also ESXi 6.7 update 2. So as far we know, based on the VMware uh, requirement, vCenter 8 support only seven. Based on the VMware forum, based on the VMware forum or knowledge bill article, um, I didn't see actually on the knowledge base, but on the forum I saw, it says it support only ESXi 8 and ESXi 7, but I didn't see anything uh, about 6.7. But when I check interoperability metrics here, it shows it's going to support all the 6.7 version, but not fully, maybe partially. So that's what I want to check. So I'm going to add 6.7. I know, like all of you guys already knows, I can add ESXi 8 and ESXi 7. That's not an issue. But 6.7, we was confused. So now I have it, I'm going to add it. So right click on it, the, the, the way we can add a ESXi host, which is first we need to create a data center. I click and create this. It does a simple name, anything like test or whatever, or you can say uh, ELSVA, something ELSVA, it's, it doesn't matter. It's just a name. Okay, so now we have a data center here, ELSVA. So under this, we can have a, we can add a host. So I'm going to add the host, I'm not sh So actually just for testing, I deployed this one. I didn't configure, I didn't assign anything here. So we have a DSCP IP 192.168.1.184, right? 184 and so, and for ESXA 8 is 183. So I'm going to add ESXA 8 first and then ESXA 6.7, all right? I'm going here, IP address 10, sorry, 192.168.1.183 which is ESX number ESX8, right? And username is root and password is password, whatever the password. Okay, I'm going to add it. Yes. And so it's supposed to be add because this one is supported on vCenter rate. That's why ESX8 is supposed to be add, right? And look like it's successfully going to be add. Okay, and finish. So seems like I I have added. Within a short time, it's gonna be ready. It's ninety percent done, right? Ninety percent complete. Okay. So it's done. It's added, right? Now I'm going to add eighty four. Eighty four is is sex size six point seven update two. Yes.
All right, seems like it's work. This is really good news. All right, it's successfully added. So if you look at here, what what's the version is this? 6.7, this is the build number. And based on the build number, the latest build with 6.7 is 20 something, but this is 13. So, and also I know this is um, update two. So update two, I'm able to add it. So right click on it. Uh, new virtual machine. Just trying to add one virtual machine here. Any name, just any name. <sighs> so actually I don't have enough for the windows. Maybe I can say yes, yeah, success something. Then maybe I will have options. Cause it's greater than the amount of the okay. Oh sorry. Ten. What ten is Five. Oh, okay. Actually, you know, uh, I don't have enough space here. Let's say a hundred, hundred megabyte. Just not finish. So I'm able to create a virtual machine under this is a host, which is excited. This is a host. See, six seven. So under this, I'm able to add this one. So that means what we prove, like uh, B centers. The center age support ESXi 8, any version of the ESXi 7, and also it support any version from 6.7. Any version means 7.0, 7. 7. update 1, 7.0, 7. update 2, 7.0, 7. update 3, all version is supported. That's all. That's all for today. Actually, that's what I want to show. And thank you guys. Thanks for watching. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And don't forget to click the bell icon because if you don't click the bell icon, you'll not get the my next video update. And thank you, thanks for watching. And if you think uh, this video will help you, please share with your friends or your coworker or whoever you think. And thanks again, bye.